So, according to the pundits, Peter B and his opposition Labour Party are trying to do what has never been done before in the history of Nigeria, getting a court to overturn the outcome of a presidential election. Mr. B, who was the third placed candidate in the presidential election, has now officially challenged the results that saw Bola Tinubu of the ruling APC party declared the winner. In addition to raising questions about the processes leading to the outcome of the election, which he and the Labour Party say were riddled with irregularities, they also argue that Mr. Tinubu should not have been eligible to run for the top office in the first place. Election disputes, of course, take months to resolve in Nigeria, despite the fact that the Constitution stipulates that, where possible, they should be concluded before a candidate is sworn in. So, what are their chances of overturning the results? Well, for more on this, I'm joined now in the studio by the vice presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Yusuf Dati Baba Ahmed. We've also given an invitation to the APC for them to come in and respond to this interview tonight, if they so wish. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. Most welcome, Charles. Um, first of all, let's do some scene setting. Just crystallize for us the reasons you're going to court and what you want the tribunal to do. The election petition is a matter for professionals, lawyers, and by our standard and uh, general attitude, we allow the best to do justice to those questions. Um, as the candidate, I would rather hold on to the constitutional matters. Uh, that are also inclusive uh, in what you just asked me now. Mm. So if you may, let me proceed to speak about constitution. The Electoral Act, which is mainly why what the lawyers are doing at the tribunal, is a process document. The constitution is a different document in its entirety. Um, nations exist because they have a constitution. A constitutional breach is a big issue. Um, uh, it's a make or break issue. We're not just talking about um, losing the election. We're not talking about a constitutional breach. Where you have a constitutional breach, there is no president-elect. I beg to say, by the standard um, meaning of section 134, there is the clear interpretation of 134, and there is the INEC interpretation of 134. Now, I'm going to hold on to that. I will stick to that, and I will deliver victory on that. By that, I dare tell you, with all humility, we do not have a president-elect in Nigeria today. What al Haji Tinumbu is holding is a dud certificate, is a dud check. There are no funds in that account. It will bounce. You cannot swear in a president who has, whose uh, certificate of return assaults the Constitution because the Constitution is the platform on which a presidency rests and when that has been violated it cannot sit. Mr. President, do not organize that handover. CJN, your Lordship, do not swear in this man so long as that problem is not cured. Swearing in al Haji Tinumbu is as good as swearing in a military regime. They are both unconstitutional. Well, no, hold on. Yeah. This is the all-important thing mm. now. Well, let me just what, make a quick disclaimer before you do. Before you, before go you do. On. Before you do. Because you do. he will be sworn in unless the 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 courts find in agreement with what you're saying. So, listen. Right. Let them swear him in for not four years, for a hundred years. 
he will remain an unconstitutionally sworn in president. That's the point I'm making. Even if they swear him in, it is unconstitutional. Hmm. That is our comfort. And that is our agitation at the same point. To save Nigeria, you have to cure that problem. Now, being the powerful that they are, it is even better for even us, the opposition, that they go and create additional 6% votes of the FCT from thin air and claim that they are the high and powerful and add it to his votes and swear him in with the 25% than to go and swear in a uh, president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria without 25% in the FCT, denied by the Labour Party, <laughs> us. Now, my take. When their lordships, the justices, make a ruling out of their wisdom, the common man on the street and you and I will listen to the judgment and will understand the judgment. If we can understand the judgment, then we can understand it now. Here is another take. The law is not a game for politicians to play. The Constitution is not a puzzle for candidates and, and their lawyers to solve. Justices, their lordships, are not in place for rich candidates to refer poor candidates to them after being bullied out in the polling units. Well, your candidate isn't poor, is he? <laughs> we are, because we have not spent the kind of money they, they did. Right, but he certainly isn't ranked as, as a poor person in Nigeria. Well, anyway, that's, that's not the issue yeah. now. Let's come back. Um, we're talking about the wisdom mm. of their lordships, because ultimately that will decide the fate of Nigeria. Wisdom is intellect plus experience, but this time you're talking of higher intellect. W intelligence is, is comprised of five qualities, and I'm now going into educational psychology. I'm actually delving into philosophy. Language ability, arithmetic ab uh, ability, um, memory, logic, and creativity. All common people, you and I, have these things. Section 134 is as plain as can be. Section 134 was not at the mercy of uh, Mahmoud Yakubu. At the height of administrative rascality, recklessness, and official arrogance to interpret. Right. But justices of the courts interpret the constitution. Executive officers follow instructions. Right. But, but just for the let, sake of let our audience, just, yes. just remind us of what section 134 is. Section 134 says the president shall have scored, not in exact wordings, at 25% uh, in each of at least two-thirds of the states of the Federation and the Federal Capital Territory. Yeah, but that, that's, a, could, that's a question of, it, I it, mean... It could it, not be any it, clearer than this. Interpretation. There is no interpretation. Well, I told you, yeah. the, the Constitution is not a puzzle to be solved. The Constitution is a document simplified to be followed. Yeah, but that's one of the grounds on, on which you're I filing did, a, I told a, you a, I am petition. holding. I told you I am holding on to that because right now, technically speaking, constitutionally speaking, security speaking, we do not have a president-elect by the standard definition of Section 134, but by INEC definition, they have proceeded to give a certificate of return. And I'm telling you, that even if they swear in Al-Haji Tunumbu, 
it is an unconstitutional and will continue to be. Yeah, but that's just an one of the grounds on which you're filing of, a complaint. Uh, let, Charles, let you're not following me. Charles, well, I understand you're not what me. you mean, but let me just make yeah. this point yeah. just briefly, and I apologize for interrupting you, yeah. but that point that you're holding on to yes. is, has not been clearly determined by legal precedent. So we've got senior advocates of Nigeria arguing on both sides of the fence, for and against. Can I answer you? Yeah. Even those who argued against us in this case ended up helping our case that the FCT has been adjudged to be a state. Now, if it is a state, where is the 25% of FCT? They don't have it. Because the Constitution, one city, Section 134, says in each of and the FCT, it could not be any clearer than this. Well, that we is why I painstakingly right. took, okay, I painstakingly took, ultimately when they use their wisdom to, de to decide, they will come back to tell you what you and I will understand mm. on an ordinary day. That ordinary day was yesterday, is today, is tomorrow. We can read section 134, we can understand it, we can interpret it. And for God's sake, let me say, say one, once again, the Constitution is not a puzzle, it's a working document. It is the bedrock mm. of a nation's life. But obviously it is the platform on which you swear in mm. a president. If you violate it, use power, use anything to swear in a president, he will forever continue to be an unconstitutional president. Now, do you want to have an unconstitutional president in Nigeria? No. For the sake of democracy, I repeat, even if it means they create 6% and add to, to yeah. that ticket to me, this is the time for advocacy to be added to the legal proceedings. Well, I mean, if... For if, the if, entire if, world, right. like, fill the Nigerian public space. If, if the courts yeah. find in his favor and find against you, then the issue of constitutional identity doesn't arise, does it? I mean, do, do mm. you trust the legal process in Nigeria? Quite frankly, I have said it before now that now I do not. But it is no reason for us not to go. And I have given my reasons not to trust. Um, it is very clear that you do not contest two offices at the same time. An important, exalted office like the Senate President today contested presidency, lost to al Haji Tunumbu, and now is an elected senator. What else are you going to tell me? I repeat, the Constitution is not a puzzle. The law is not a game that politicians should play. Mm. Justices, their, their lordships, are not in place for rich politicians to refer smaller politicians to so that they do what they feel they can do. Right. Now, law, not just Nigeria, law is at stake. Because when the high and mighty do what they feel like, and brazenly change the meaning of clear provisions of the Constitution. Law does not exist anymore. Right. But as I said, we, we would have to await the interpretation of the courts in order to be clear on that. But Charles, I just want to go through I need to clear something with the you. grounds on which you're actually... I mean, you've mentioned I need one to clear ground something with you. And, and perhaps a second one. But, I mean, we've heard that... Your petition argues that Mr. Tinubu should not have been eligible to run for the office of president. On what basis do you say that? You would have heard about the organized private sector. There is the world of organized crime. And organized crime is dangerous. Organized crime actually is danger itself. And... Uh, Let me go back a bit in history. Not Nigerian history. There were, you insisted in asking this question, so you should bear the brunt of the answers. In the America's 1930s, the people like um, Ben Siegel, in the 80s, uh, the, that drug lord who threw a justice from the helicopter 
And now you have El Chapo, who can always get himself out of prison. Anything that has to do with drugs is nightmare to a nation. Right. So that's I'm one of the, the, the yeah, yes. that's one of the grounds on that's which you're you filing. asked for it. Let me answer no, you. Don't sure. run away. Don't run no, away, no, Charles. I'm not you away. Ask, I, I'm you simply ask. trying to <laughs> find the grounds. I'm, I'm not trying to. You I'm, ask. I'm not trying to indict anybody. You can, you can I, I just want me. the ground. You grounds. can't stop me. So that's <laughs> <laughs> you ask. so that's one of the grounds. We have to be careful what we say because it's in court in any case now. So, um, but what I'm curious to know is that. <laughs> I mean, you, you, people expected, perhaps, I mean, I've looked at your, the, the, your, your petition. I mean, I've scanned through it. I haven't read every single word. It's more than 100. Well, you need to so read it's it. about 100 pages long, and it was sent to me fairly late this evening. But I'm wondering how challenging and daunting it has been for you collecting evidence from the 176,000 polling units and more sort of I mean, lots of collation centers across the country because people were expecting that that would form a significant part of your petition, that you would present evidence of manipulation, of fraud, of intimidation, of, of things that happened in those polling units as a way to, solid, to strengthen your case. But I, I'm not seeing that in your petition. We hit them where they don't expect we didn't ask them to read elections. We didn't ask them. There are many things. In fact, we've been very, very kind on these people. We've been very, very gentle with them. Look, all of us can account for our political opponents. Ask other elected mm. people or elect to declare, dec dec to account for their political opponents. Ngige is alive, in my own case. All of them from, from McAfee that I have faced and defeated, they are all alive. Other people elect cannot tell you the same in Lagos, in Borno State. They can't tell you this. Mm. We are talking about danger. So we on our own part have been careful in saying, but you ask the question, somebody, some gentleman forfeited $460,000 in order not to go to prison. And now is a president-elect somewhere having assaulted the Constitution, well, yes, we will put it in our petition. Well, it is in your petition. It is. I mean, I, I, I saw like the, I told I, you, I saw we the will petition. Hit, we, nev we never expected them right. to behave the way they did, so we will hit them where they don't expect to be hit. What if you go all the way to the Supreme Court and your case is thrown out? What then? We are mortal beings. We are ordinary citizens. We never claim to be high and mighty. It has happened before. Uh, we just take it. Remember, Nigerians contested through <coughs> Peter Obi and me. It is not Peter Obi and me contesting. It is Nigerians. So, uh, well, Nigerians' obedience, we did our best. Mm -hmm. They are more powerful than us. Nigeria is a speck of dust. Uh, sorry, the whole world is a speck of dust. Nigeria is a stain on that speck of dust in almighty God's creations. God will do with Nigeria what he feels like. Put it in the hand of drug lords, put it in the hand of murderers, put it in the hand of businessmen, educationists. God almighty will decide that. So I am not bothered. Let Supreme Court decide. What I will continue to do is to come back to tell you that the incoming government of Al Haji Tinumbu and Malam Shetima, from our own mortal understanding of Section 134, is going to be an unconstitutional government. Swearing in that government is as good as swearing in the Nigerian army. I'm not a careless talker. Before I came here, I did my research, I did my homework, I did my prayers. And I know what I'm saying, I repeat. Swearing in Al Haji Tinumbu and Malin Shetima is as good as swearing in another because right. they are both unconstitutional. You have assaulted, uh, you have violated section 134. It was not in place in the place of uh, Professor Yakubu 4 a.m. to go and declare and interpret what 
clearly the constitution, which is not a puzzle. Right. Well, what a about working document? Right. I keep saying that. What about the process of this election? Because that's something that's contained in your petition as well. The Electoral yes. Commission, INEC, has acknowledged that there were major technical hitches which affected the upload of the election results on its server, mm. Mm. but they're not ag admitting to guilt or wrongdoing. That's mm. just technical hitches. I mean, how are you approaching that? I told you we do share responsibilities. And we are leaving what you're asking me to those who are exceptionally versed. Right. The it. lawyers, basically. The lawyers. And I am taking, for example, this angle of constitutionality. And at this point, maybe I should let you know that something called the Constitutional Crisis Resolution Group may soon come up with a simple, noble principle objective of preventing the coming into effect of an unconstitutional government in Nigeria. Do you understand? We separate responsibility. Yes, but of course, they, they, my own. it doesn't matter what they, whatever constitutional group does. I yes. mean, it's up to the courts it, now I, to make a decision. When you finish listening to what this group will do, then you will understand that everything rests on the court. Right. Because now, everything rests on the constitution. We're saying the same thing. Mm. I keep telling you that the entire nation is a nation because we have a constitution. Yeah, but everything... Which, which must not be abused. No, I understand that. But everything rests on the interpretation of that constitution by the court. This is where I've got you. Charles, section 134 stands interpreta interpreted. I repeat... It stands interpreted. Well, I, I've seen, I mean, I've seen suggestions to that effect, but I, I, think, I, think, I think we need I a, a reinterpretation no, no, in no. the courts. Uh, listen, go to the ends of this world and come back. The truth is the truth. The meaning of each can never change. The meaning of and can never change. Two people are sitting on this table. Charles Anyagolu and one guy from Labour Party. <laughs> so there's, you can never, ever change that. And that is why I have told you, the wisdom, which is higher intellect plus experience of their lordships, when eventually they make that ruling, which we will, I, I commit to accept their ruling today. Mm. Even though I don't believe in them, I and Peter will be committed to accepting their ruling. Well, you don't have a choice. From, I mean, if, if that's what they and, decide, and exactly. not, you don't have any they, other... That's the are, final They are our decision. world. They are our world. They are right. our life. Mm. But, but listen, the, listen. Yeah. I've told you. By the time they decide it, you and I will understand whatever they understand. Those p people who wrote the Constitution are people like you and I. They speak the same English you and I wrote the GCE O levels for. And I dare to tell you again that section 134 and all other allied and related sections are already interpreted. They are to be followed. They are not a puzzle, I keep telling right. you, for anybody to play with. Well, we'll have to again wait and the see. Nigerian the Nigerian constitution decide. has been violated by INEC. Right. But the, the decision... The Nigerian constitution right. has been violated by, you, one, reckless, that, you, you've by made, one reckless chairman right. you, You've made that of point INEC. emphatically. I have, and, uh, and well, this I has to be... This, in this the last, is what Nigeria is about now. Right. I want to ask you this in the last minute that yes. we've got. Yes. Um, the decision of the tribunal, which yes. should come within 180 days, yes. is of course not final, and this could go, as we said, all the way to the Supreme Court for a conclusive verdict. So it could take upwards of a year, perhaps even longer, but you say you've got the stomach for that. We do. We do have a stomach. We do have the attitude for, in fact, ensuring most of all, which is exactly why I'm here today, that an unconstitutional government must never be sworn in. Tinubu Shetima must never, ever be sworn in because of the violation of the Constitution. So we're not talking of one year. 
we're talking of before 29th of May, is either they go and create 6% out of thin air, and we said, you people have the power. Go ahead and swim. I'm, I'm happier, really, that they can rig again after the election, after the results, and add 6%. Really, I'm happier than for them to go and swear in this president who, by clear definition, clear interpretation, whatever you call it, go and come back, section 134 has okay. been breached. Nigerian constitution has been breached. If you swear in a president whose certificate breaches the constitution, it is null and void. Even when he is in power, it is null and void. Right. Okay. Even if he lasts the four years, it is null, null and void. Forty years after his eight years, it was null and void. Okay. I, we, I this want is to what we're saying must not happen. I want you to cannot bring in. Right. You cannot you, you've swear made that in point, Mr. Uh, uh, an unconstitutional. Right. You've, you've made that point to, to Nigeria. Yusuf it, we Dati. will continue to make that point. Yeah, you, you have made that point. Achieved, yes. And Yusuf Dati Baba Ahmed, I want to thank you very much indeed for coming in. And he is, of course, the vice presidential candidate of the Labour Party. And let me once again point out that we have tried to reach out to the APC tonight, and they're welcome to have a right to reply to this interview tonight.